we're going to get started here in a second. So, like I said in the daily operations ping, the first half of this training is going to be held on the Discord, and we're going to go over general strategy and map strategy. Very briefly, I'm going to go over uh, the difference between strategy and tactics in the plan itself since well, I, usually when we say strategy, we talk about uh, you know the way that we win an alert, how, how to attack certain lattices, defend other lattices, yada yada, to the point where you win an alert, that strategy. Tactics usually will apply to when you get into a base and fight at that base with you know, your squad or your platoon, the, the the small level tactics that you do to win a battle that factors into the overall strategy uh, strategy of the alert. Uh, yeah, that's fine, Tobzers. Listening is perfectly fine. What we're going to do is I'm going to just start off with general strategy, and then we'll move into map strategy. I don't plan to spend a ton of time on any particular topic because I want to breeze through several things without taking too much of your Wednesday nights away from you. Okay, so before we go into any, any specific map stuff, as far as general strategy is concerned, uh, three of the, the most general things that will apply to all maps in most situations are going to be command chat, big fight slash zergs, and psychology. So very, I'm just going to go over each of these briefly. Command chat, pretty self-explanatory. If any of you platoon leads or squad leads are not using command chat, I would heavily advise you to tap into it every now and then. Just, I mean, you're not always going to get bangers. You're not even always going to get a response. But sometimes, especially during prime time when we have two or three SKL platoons and maybe like VKTZ is running or something like that, command chat can be a very big boon. Uh, one of the reasons for which is a, is a concept that's going to, not concept, but a thought that's going to come up a lot during this is the idea of compartmentalization, which is basically just taking some things and just banishing it from your mind so that you can focus on other things. And that is basically what what command chat can do for you. If there is another SKL platoon, if there's a VKTZ platoon, if there's just some random squad who's talking command chat, if you know that you need to go to the X stronghold base to defend it, but you really want to stay where you are to make sure this cap goes through, and you're really kind of like, oh, I need to be two, at two places at once, sometimes command chat can help you out there. If you know that the other SKL platoon is at the base that you are worried about, then you can just banish that base from your mind for better or for worse, unless they say otherwise, and focus on your objective at hand. And... That's one of the important parts of Command Chat is that it's it, it exists, it, it lets you know where the other platoons are, and if the other platoon or squads are actually using Command Chat the way it's intended, then you actually can kind of banish parts of the map from your mind, and then they will let you know if you need if it needs to re-enter your, your mind so you can focus more on the objectives for your platoon. Uh, moving on from that, we have Big Fight slash Zergs. Uh, this is kind of a map thing, but I wanted to talk about it in general because it's 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 both very simple and very complicated to talk about because platoon leads and squad leads have one of two ways to approach an enemy zerg or, or a massive fight that's going on. You either A, avoid it like the plague and just say, we'll let that 96 plus go down that last line and we'll make up for it elsewhere, or you try to fight it. Uh... However you decide to do it, it's kind of up to you as a platoon or a squad lead or up to your platoon lead. I'm not really saying that you have to fight a Zerg and try to break it up. I'm not really saying that avoiding it is a bad is a bad idea as long as you're getting a bunch of ground. It's just you have to acknowledge that it exists. Like at some point, that Zerg is going to, to hit something that is important if you avoid it. And if you don't avoid it and uh, try to stop it where it wants to be, it's going to be even harder to break up. So you with Zergs and big fights, it's 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 more complicated than looking at it and saying, okay, there's a 96 plus at Scarred Mesa. I guess we're gonna have to do something about that eventually. But then you don't think about it beyond that. It's it, you need to think about where it's going to go because if it ends up somewhere, or if it could end up somewhere that's going to be a massive problem, then it's going to be even harder to break up then. So then you have to think about, do I want to break it up here? 
do I want to cut it off? Uh, the, you know, it, it becomes more complicated. There's no right or wrong answer for anything, but it's you just I just I, I see a lot of people that seem to just say, oh, there's a 96 plus over there. Well, let's, I'm just we're just not going over there, and it's more complicated than that. And I just want everyone to acknowledge that it's more complicated than that. Where where it is going to end up is important. Uh, what what it's going to do when it ends up there is important. A many members of the 96 plus Zerg or a big fight will not understand why they're there. Like uh, there, there might be like a, like 20% of the people that are part of that Zerg know, okay, this is a good last line to be on. But the, uh, but the other 80% most of the time are just people that showed up there because it's a big fight or they hit the J key and there are a bunch of new players there in either case. They they won't know where they're going. Only some of them will. So that's why it's it can be a good idea to break them up somewhere that is just like unimportant. Like break them up on the road from one base to the other, uh, or or cut them off to the point where the Zerg will just kind of dissipate on its own because there's no because they're just completely cut off, and a lot of the people that cared will now care more about the cutoff. So it's. <laughs> I'm not really here to to provide any uh, solid yes or no answers to that, but it's 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 Zergs are more complicated than a lot of people give them credit for. That they're a big problem. Uh, avoiding them is perfectly fine. Focusing them down with a, a big extended fight to try to break up the Zerg is also perfectly fine. It's however you treat the Zerg is kind of up to you. What I'm saying is that it's complicated. You kind of need to think about where the Zerg is going to go. It's it's going to be a problem either now or in the future, and you need to either cut it off or get so much territory while that Zerg is going down the one lattice line that it's worth wherever they're ended up ending up, or you need to plan to break them up somewhere along the road, uh, getting set up somewhere down the line where the Zerg is going to be is is a pretty good way to break them up. But as far as just general strategy is concerned. You can't just dismiss Zergs as just, oh, great, there's a Zerg going down that last line. We'll just go somewhere else. You need to think about where they're going. And uh, related to this, the last topic for general uh, general strategy is just psychology. It's uh, a lot of the times when you are in a platoon or a squad, you might hear people say, well, we're putting 48 people here because it sends a message or we need to stop the Zerg here so that they know that they can't just beat up on us the rest of the alert. Um, stuff like that is not just platitudes. It's not just stuff that we say to kind of make us feel better. It actually is like a le- legitimate strategy. Depending on what TR or NC platoon leads are on, they're, they are very susceptible to psychology, just like we are when we get double teamed and stuff. It's... It might be easy to say, okay, let's not worry about that ghost cap. It's it might be easy to just let a Zerg go down the lattice line, but that does send a certain message. It does say a certain thing in a certain language to whoever is doing it to us that we will let them do it. And so a lot of times you need to either punish it by, like I said earlier, breaking up a Zerg or cutting off a Zerg. Whatever you're doing, you have to react to it. You can't just let it lie. Like if you actually want to win the alert. You cannot say, oh, there's a 96 plus Zerg there. Let's go off and have a harasser race. That's no longer trying to win the alert. That's perfectly fine if you, if you think a harasser race is, is, uh, is fun, but going off to have one or doing like a, a mega construction or something to just kind of like kill some time is, is the absent, absence of strategy. And it's perfectly fine if you're having fun, but just for us talking about strategy here, it's it's the absence of it. it. It is a non-answer to a problem. They are asking you the question, we have 96 people going down the lattice line, what is your response? And your response could be any number of things, but whatever you do, they will take notice of. I'm not, I'm not going to guarantee a large portion of them will. We, we all know that the TR and the NC and the VS all make dumb decisions uh, based off nothing plenty of times, but there are plenty of times where... I've led a platoon or someone else has led a platoon and they have said, okay, we have an hour and a half. And if we do this here, we do hit this here. I bet you money will end in a fight here and it'll be a massive pop sink for the last 20 minutes. And they'll get frustrated and just get basically give us the alert. And most of the time that ends up being the truth. 
it's you have to think about what what kind of message you are sending if you send let's let's take the ghost cap example because we've talked about zergs a lot if you see that there's like a 1 to 12 trnc taking one of your bases and it like bumps up to a 12 to 24 because they were just because some other platoon decided to reinforce that or they were trying to be sneaky in the last like minute of like a of single point cap. Sure, you can just do a proportional response. A proportional response would just be say, okay, I'm just going to send two squads, my own 12 to 24, to that base and we're going to even it out. And the defenders usually uh, equal or the defenders usually win an even fight. So if you're at 50-50 on the base and whoever the defender is usually will get back on point, usually will defend the base, perfectly acceptable. It's a good like economics of force type of thing to where I don't want to send too many of my people to respond to a threat because that means I can send other people to respond to a different threat. Perfectly fine. My my As far as psychology is concerned, my counter argument there would be Let's just send 48 people down their throat, send a massive message that we're just going to wipe them from the base, you know, salt the earth, destroy their logistics in half the time it would have taken an equal amount of population. And then we'll be done over, send a message that if you pop, put any kind of pop on this base that matters, we're just going to overpop it. And then they're just going to go away to an, e an easier fight. We'll be done in half the time. And then we can just send 48 people to deal with another problem. And that's an, another one of the reasons why a lot of people call, especially the last like 20, 30 minutes of the alert, but even just some of our platoons, they call it redeploy side because we redeploy a lot. And it, it's it's another part of that economics of force thing to where it's just like, sure, I could send an equal amount of population to, to four different things. I can, send, I can send my one to 12 squads in groups of four. Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta to a bunch of one to 12 fights and probably expect some kind of success because of just based on the population ratios or whatever. But who knows how long all four of those squads are going to be separate. Who knows how long uh, one will take versus the others. And then, and then it comes down to platoon cohesion or whatever. So in a lot of cases, as far as psychology is concerned and just sending a message to the other squads, Sure, you can split four squads off to deal with four di different problems, but if you have the time, I would probably just put half the platoon or the full platoon one by one by one and knock each of them down like dominoes in half the time. It sends a message, sends them off to a different fight. Uh, that's one of the good things about breaking up a Zerg, is that if you break up a 96+, plus, no matter how hard it is, and it is hard, but some, some 96 pluses can be very hard to break up, but once it's broken up, those 96 people are not going to go to the same fight. Uh, I, I bet you money that every 96 plus that you break up will disperse themselves between five, six different fights, and then there's not really a Zerg going on anymore. So uh, it's that's the psychology thing I could go on about for a while. There's lots of specific examples, but we're, I'm just trying to talk about, how, generally speaking, you want to think about command chat. You want to think about what Zergs slash big fights are doing for the strategy of the alert, where a Zerg is going to go, how much uh, pop a big fight is taking up, and you want to think about what kind of message any individual action is going to send. Um, the last little point I have on psychology is we say to avoid the middle of the map for a reason, and a lot of the squad leads say the same thing, to where like it, the whoever controls the most territory, whoever controls the middle of the map, has a higher chance of being seen as the the person who is ahead or or as the aggressor in a certain situation um, as far as an alert is concerned. So, like, just don't be in the middle of the map for that reason and for a lot of other completely good, strategically sound reasons. The, the middle of the map, up until, like, the last, like, 20, 30 minutes, is usually, it sends the wrong message, it usually connects us to a center fight be it the be it ice attack or the or uh or the ascent or any of the other middle nations blah 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 blah. any of those fights always end up being massive grinds and taking up large percentages of our pop so the best way to just not have to worry about that that big fight in the center or worry about the psychological negatives of being in the center is just to not be in the center uh, not in many cases not even being close to being in the center is a good idea. Uh, 
I think I don't remember who compared it to this, but a lot of people compare how, what your mid or pre early and mid alert maps should look like is like a like wings. You want to be concaved in the center, and you want to have a good chunk of territory on the right and the left flank of your line. And generally speaking, you want to hold some kind of stronghold base or a single point or a two point or a three point base that is famously uh, easy to hold. For instance, like Scarred Mesa or something like that. It, it, it's not a stronghold base, but it's all—it's also like a base that's not that difficult difficult to hold unless they put a lot of stuff into it. So. I will go ahead and move on to map strategy now. Uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, whatever, on just general strategy? Okie dokie. So, I'm going to go very briefly over some map strategy stu stuff. I'm going to be, I'm kind of been glancing through the map training pot primer that Avocado read up just to kind of get like some visual cues. I'm going to post it in the Know My channel. If anyone wants to glance through that that hasn't or wants a refresher feel free i'm not going to be reading from any specific thing per se other than uh other than page like 17 and onward after a certain point but i just kind of wanted to go over some of the things in in this and it's not so much any particular topic i'm not really i don't really want to show you guys what map hotkeys are and yada 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 the, the main point that i wanted to come across just by clicking through this document is that there's a lot of crap to read on the map and from a platoon lead or a squad leads perspective i feel like many of our newer leads and maybe even a lot of our intermediate leads i think they try to absorb too much information all at once um this comes back to the whole thing of com of uh, compartmentalizing you don't need to remember the hotkeys you, you don't need to look at the hard spawns you don't need to uh, pay attention to what base gives what resources at any given moment. Um, you don't even really need to care too much about where all the little flashes are on the map that show where heavy fighting is. Your mouse can tell you that if you just hover around. But these are all things that you should know. You should know of these things, but you just need to, to get into practice of just kind of pushing them to the back of your mind because it's there's a lot of fluff there is a lot of information out there that if you try to absorb or take or factor in at any given moment, it's just going to confuse the hell out of you or add to your, add to any slow decisions you might be making. As far as map strategy is concerned, I'm just going to give uh, my thoughts on what is applicable to all maps. I know everyone has their, their preferences. I know that for instance, Esamir and Indar are a lot more like grindy, focusing around stronghold bases than Hassan or Amrish. But all of all, all the things we've discussed prior, plus the what I'm about to talk about, applies to all bases or all maps. And I'm just going to boil it down to absolute simplicity. Imagine your platoon or the platoons in command chat, if you're in command chat, as a river. Or, or a lake, or whatever water uh, you analogy you want to go for here. You flow down each of the lattices, and you spread from lattice to lattice until your water hits a stronghold base. And the stronghold bases are rocks, in this metaphor. And you flow around them. And you only ever want to amass a, a good chunk of that water to break a rock if you feel like you really need it. That there are a lot of times, pre-alert especially, but early alert and even mid-alert, where rather than getting bogged down in like a massive uh, stronghold fight, you might just want to flow around it. Always look for cutoffs. Always stay flexible. You don't want to get uh, you don't want to get bogged down in a 45-minute fight over, say, like the ascent for no reason because that's in the center of the map. You don't really want to get bogged down in a 45-minute fight in, uh, in in a lot of the amp stations or tech plants when you have other bases that you can be shoring up elsewhere in the meantime. You just want to stay fluid. You, you want to flow around and try to cut off anything as possible. Uh, for instance, on, like, say, Amrish, Hassan, there's even a couple of, 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 uh, of examples of this in Esamir and Indar. There are plenty of lattice lines where you should just basically never be 
unless you're just killing time for whatever reason like because the cutoff is so much easier like i can't i honestly am having trouble remembering the name of the amp station that is on the southern southeastern part of esamir because that's just easier to cut off by going into emir containment and and echo valley um you should very rarely be at bases uh like on the right side of Amorish because you can just do the zealous cutoff or the or the uh onatha cutoff depending on what lattice you're on that always look for a cutoff cutoffs make things simple and making things simple is good for a squad lead or a platoon lead uh simplifying things to the is is as good as you can do especially with a public platoon uh explaining to your platoon that what a cutoff does is also very important uh a lot of people don't know hey we're going to cut off that entire lattice line and what that does is it means that other that the nc or the tr whichever faction it is cannot redeploy into those hexes anymore they can fly into the hexes sure uh if they're already in the hexes they can continue using the hard spawns but coming from outside in is no longer possible without moving yourself there via aircraft and that's a pretty important thing to to emphasize because that's what we mean by cutoff and it's always good to make sure that everyone understands you know exactly why we're doing what we're doing but you almost never want to fight for a stronghold base when you can just cut it off and you almost never want to give up a stronghold base that cannot be cut off uh so like same the amorous thing if, if you if you never want to have to worry about the zealous cutoff then never lose lose split peak it's as simple as that uh, you can boil it down to its simplicity don't worry about is don't worry about that cutoff too much as long as you never lose split peak on esamir you don't have to, if you're on the that warp the warp gate where that amp station whose name i'm forgetting is a problem just never lose your mirror containment and you won't have to worry about it and it I'm, I'm it might sound like an oversimplification when i say something like never lose it but there are stronghold bases to where if you especially those containment sites where if you just don't forget and you just keep an eye on it or have one of your squad leads keep an eye on it 48 people will be more than enough to stabilize the situation so a sword or boulder uh boulder i believe the one that you can cut off by going to ice attack or, or uh, not ice attack i think you're talking about your actually your yeah, yeah. it'd be your your yeah so your then like i've i don't think i've ever fought there i've never sent a platoon there because it's a whole uh, i've sent ghost cappers there uh, i've sent plenty of ghost cappers there because it's an easy base to ghost cap after you've cut it off and that's just one of those many examples to where you kind of just need to you know stay fluid stay on task as far as just kind of keeping your platoon moving from base to base to base build up some momentum don't worry too much about stronghold bases unless you have decided that you really need it and then when you do attack a stronghold base that's when we go into tactics and we'll we'll discuss some tactics here in the second half of the training but if you all aren't in game yet let's go ahead and start loading into the game and we're gonna start doing the tactics part of everything if anyone has any questions feel free to ask while we load up but i'm loading up right now